So I'm feeling a little evil this morning. There's a good reason. I heard somebody say, oh dear. There's a good reason for that. I'm a human being. And some of you have heard me use this quote before from an old preacher friend of mine who said, you know what the problem with the church is, don't you? I said, what? He said, it's full of people. And you know what the problem with people is, don't you? I said, what? And I'm going to clean this up a little bit. He said, they're no darn good. I'm sure you've heard that before. So like you, I am no darn good. And to prove it, I saw a sign the other day that said, watch for children. And I thought, well, that sounds like a fair trade. <laughs> Click in. And then I was at an ATM, and this elderly woman asked me to ch help check her balance. So I pushed her over. Okay. I'm really not that evil. However, I can see why the Apostle Paul said, and I quote, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. And to me, this is the ultimate conundrum for humanity. Why, why do we do things that we know we should not do or do things we don't want to do? Or to put it more plainly, why are we no darn good? You and I may seem like perfectly nice and good people most of the time, yet we have to admit, do we not, that humanity is often up to no good. There is ample evidence that we are basically bad to the bone. And so the question is, why? Why is that in us? Why do we do things that we know that we should not do, or we don't want to do? There's been no shortage of theologians and philosophers and social scientists trying to answer this question, why humanity is not perfect, basically. And I thought I would throw a few answers out to you this morning. And in fact, I have ten answers. Ten, okay? I know sermons are only supposed to have three points, but I've got ten. Number one answer, original sin. So let's just go ahead and start off with the most popular answer in our religious tradition in terms of the, the question, answering the question, why are we bad? Original sin is the doctrine that you know that claims that our evil nature is inherited from our parents at childbirth, and it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. They started it, right? And we've inherited that bad seed ever since. An original sin is implied in our reading today from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. Verse 17 says, uh, Paul says, But it is in fact, in fact it is no longer I that do it. It is no longer I that do it. That is the bad stuff, things I don't want to do. But sin that dwells within me, that's responsible. That's original sin. It's within us. It's inherent. Evil is inherent within us. And I like to say that I don't take the doctrine of original sin literally, but I do take it seriously. Because as I observe human behavior, including my own, I'm compelled to believe that, yes, indeed, there is something rotten in the state of Denmark and other places. I'm just not so sure that we can always blame Adam and Eve for our bad behavior. So who can we blame? Number two, number two answer. The devil. I think Flip Wilson thought that he was being funny years ago when he, in his comedy routine when he said, the devil made me do it. You remember that? But he was actually echoing a theory that many people from many religious traditions, not just our own, claim, which is that there is an evil force out there operating in the world that compels good people to do bad things. There's a personal force out there doing that. Now myself, I don't really ascribe to this theory, and yet when we observe the seemingly inexplicable cruelty of some people, it is understandable that we have, humanity has attributed that kind of behavior uh, to some evil being that has taken over some people, a part of humanity. And years ago I learned not to criticize this theory too much 
if I didn't believe it or whatever, I need to keep it to myself. I was teaching a, a junior high Sunday school class one day when one of the young boys asked me what I thought of the devil. Well, you know, what are you, what are you, what's your thought on that, Dr. Watson? And, and I was fresh off my graduate school experience at Baylor University, and so I launched into this scholarly explanation of the origin of an evil deity or the concept of an evil deity. I thought I was really impressing these young junior high kids. The next day, I received a phone call from a concerned parishioner who said, I heard you don't believe in the devil. Well, as I was sort of him eyeing around and sidestepping my response to this person, I realized that unless I came right out and said, oh, I believe in Satan, as loudly and as forcefully as I would say I believe in God, then in a few months, I would no longer be employed at that East Texas church. And sure enough, a few months later, they ran me off, and I still blame the devil for what happened. Number three. Here's a good explanation for why we're bad. How about our genes? Our genes. And I'm not talking about the genes we wear. I'm talking about our genetic makeup. There's a big debate in our culture about... Uh, nature versus nurture, you know, biology versus our environment. Are we evil because we had uh, rotten parents, for example, which I'll get to in a moment, which would be how we're nurtured, or are we evil because we were born rotten? That is part of our nature. That is, it's our genetic makeup. And it really, when you think about it, it's interesting how closely related this theory of the gene being responsible for our evil is uh, with the ancient doctrine of original sin. And, and original sin was a doctrine that was formulated many centuries before we knew anything about human uh, genetics, the gene code and so forth. Uh, but think about it, both gene theory and the doctrine of original sin suggest in their own way that we are born bad. One says it's because Adam and Eve ate a fruit they shouldn't have ate, and the other one says it's just part of our genetic makeup. So we're born bad. Perhaps then human evil does begin in the blue genes after all, although don't read too much into that. Well, this leads us to number four. How about our parents? How about the way we're raised? You know, bad genes reflect the nature part of this nature-nurture debate then our parents are a large part of what we might call the nurture part of who we are. So should we blame our parents for, how, for our bad side? You know, we, you know, so when we do stuff, when we do bad stuff, so we say, well, my parents are responsible. You know, when we observe or we read about a truly evil person like a serial killer, one of our first responses is usually, I wonder how he or she was raised. I wonder how they, what were their parents like? as if that person is obviously evil, evil because they had terrible parents. Well, there's no question that parental upbringing has both good and ill effects on our children. However, I mean, we know this. There are too many bad people that were raised in really good homes, and there are a lot of good people out there that were raised in bad homes, to allow us to make parents the primary explanation for our own rotten side. And yet, if you, if you ask my son about such things, he, he, would, he would definitely have a response about that. Number five, how about a lack of conscience as an explanation for human evil? A lack of conscience. I just finished reading a book titled The, the Sociopath Next Door. And it was written about... 12 years ago, but it's interesting. The author claims that fully 4% of the American public are sociopaths, which means they have no conscience. 4%, that's one out of every 25. What do we have, 100 people in here today? So four of you are sociopaths? Look around. The 8.30 people said they didn't have any there. They were all at the 10 or 10 o'clock service, so. But no, sociopaths don't go to church. None of you fit that category. And a sociopath would never ask the question, why do we do what we don't want to do? Because a sociopath doesn't mind doing what other people don't want to do. In fact, they, it just doesn't bother them a bit because they don't have a conscience. 
Now, while we might ascribe some evil, um, some of the evil activity in the world, the sociopaths, psychopaths, sadists, people with antisocial behavior, things like that, this does not account for why normal people do bad things. Sociopaths may have a greater tendency to do evil, yet we all do evil. So the question is, why? Why, do, why is it something that all of humanity takes part in? Well, here's a number six interesting uh, answer. How about religion? <laughs> religion. Now, there's a popular scapegoat for, for evil in the world, right? It is undeniable that religion can be a source of evil in the world, and we see it every day on cable news. Terrorism of all varieties is, is often linked to a religious worldview, and that's a warped religious wor worldview, but it is a religious worldview, and this is nothing new. If you look at all the, for centuries, all the war that was going on in Europe, that was all theologically supported, right? So religion can be a, a force for, for evil and bad. At the same time, we need to, I mean, we need to understand that religion probably began in order to reduce evil in the world, to reduce evil. And while there are multiple scriptures from all religions, including our own, that seem to condone evil, some, condone some bad things that we consider bad today, the overall message of the world's scriptures is to condemn evil. That's really what they're trying to say. So I think we can give religion, per se, a pass on the evil thing. Number seven, how about a pursuit of money and power? Money and power. Does that cause evil? There's the wide assumption out there, and we, we, uh, we find it in our Bible, which says, the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, there's a lot of truth to that, although an Uber driver, driver told me the other day that the lack of money is the root of all evil, which explains why he was moonlighting as an Uber driver. <laughs> but how about the pursuit of money? What about the pursuit of power? You know, Lord Acton famously said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This forever established the pursuit of power as a likely candidate for that which causes us to do bad things. Well, the problem with this power and pursuit of power and money theory is that relatively few people in the world ever get a chance to pursue a high level of power or a huge bank account. So it do, that theory does not explain why the rest of us are no darn good. And also, remember this, some people seek money and power so that they can do good in the world. Now, those are the people that we should study, right? What's making them tick if they're pursuing th those things for the right reason? Speaking of the pursuit of good, this is my eighth, my eighth uh, answer. The pursuit of good. Now here's a theory that we almost never consider as, a, as an answer for evil in the world. But remember the old saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. That means that sometimes evil is caused by people who think that they're doing good. And, and I think, yes, that's true, it does happen, but it is not true enough to discourage us from pursuing good. So pursue good all, all you want. My ninth answer is evolution. Evolution. As an explanation for evil in the world. What do I mean by that? Well, as a, as a modern person, which I think I am most of the time, I, I tend to explain evil scientifically, if I can, as much or more as I do theologically. So scientifically, if if we evolve from a lower life form, that is an animal existence, then the, the theory is that we have inherited those animal tendencies, that, that, that flawed morality from our pre-human ancestors. Could be true, right? One of my uh, professors asked uh, my class years ago, um, you know, when did sin enter the world? 
Now, we were talking about, you know, the Adam and Eve story, and of course the professor, it's cool, you know, you guys say, well, that's a myth, that didn't really happen. So when did it happen? <laughs> when did sin enter the world? And I raised my hand, and I said, well, sin entered the world the first time a caveman hit a cave woman on the head with a club and decided that was wrong. So in other words, the very moment ancient humanity developed a conscience or a moral, a moral compass is the moment sin entered the world. Think about that. I thought it was a good answer. He did too. So maybe a good answer to the question, why do we do what we don't want to do, is that we're still shaking off our animal nature. We're still shaking, you know, get rid of it. It's still there. Maybe that's why we do bad. Maybe. One more answer to the question. This is really not an answer. It's um, just a statement. Maybe there's no such thing as evil. Maybe there's no such thing as evil. Now, I know that sounds like a crazy theory, right? That human evil does not actually exist. That's a highly philosophical theory, and it's the notion that really it's saying that we humans have evolved in a way to where we arbitrarily assign good and evil. That this is the way we develop, so we think this is good and this is bad, but it's arbitrary. It's just the way we have developed as, as creatures. And so as far as theories go, this one has a lot of philosophical merit, but it really has no practical value whatsoever. Because I don't know about you, but I can't go through life without distinguishing, arbitrarily or not, between good and evil. I have to, I have to draw a line somewhere, because if we don't draw a line somewhere... We can't have any semblance of civilization. We have to have some understanding that this is good and this is evil. And again, the question is, well, where does evil come from? Why, are, why do we have that within us? So there you are. Those are ten responses to the question, why do we do what we don't want to do? And so I'll sum it up for you. Because somebody asked, told me last week or the week before, I said, when he leaves here, he, you know, sometimes I don't tell you what to do. I just, I talk about things, but I never tell you what to do. So I'm going to do that right now. The bottom line is this. We sometimes do things that we know we should not do. And here's my advice to you. Stop doing those things. Amen. <laughs>